When I was a kid, I had a hard time picturing my future husband. When we met, I wasn't sure who I was. I wasn't comfortable in my skin or confident in what I wanted, and I certainly didn't think I'd be in a long-term committed relationship, let alone one from 3,000 miles away. I remember when we talked about what we wanted in life, and I couldn't picture our futures lining up. We were from such different places with such vastly different upbringings, so it seemed impossible that we could want the same things. That's so funny to me now because you're the best teammate I could have ever asked for. I feel like we went from baby gays to secure queer adults together, and I wouldn't know how much love I deserve if it wasn't for you. <laughs> I love being your partner. I love our life together. I love watching scary movies and snuggling almost every morning and talking uh, with you about every thought that comes into my mind. I love your heart and your warmth and the way you absolutely radiate. When I was a kid, I wasn't able to picture what I wanted and that was because it wasn't something that I saw. Together, we get to make it all up as we go along and I'm so grateful you're the person that I get to figure it out with. We get to be the representation that we deserve to see as growing people and we get to create a family together and put incredible people into the world. I promise to choose you every day and communicate and listen if it gets hard for either of us to choose each other. I promise to trust you when you tell me something and to always be honest about how I am feeling and what I need. I'm so in love with you, so much more than I ever thought it was possible to love someone, and I'm so proud to have you as my life partner. I'm excited to hold your spotlight and be your biggest fan for the rest of our lives. decided that it was fine, I was never gonna have a wedding dress or bridesmaids, and I would instead find all the happiness in the world on my own. I knew that I would rather be happy and problem solving on my own than spend time with people who would have conditions for their love for me. And that was when I stopped thinking about this day. I was sure that love wasn't real and there was no one in the world who would be worth all the complaints I could hear from what felt like everyone in the world. And then in what some might call the most romantic section of a massive Disney store is where I first saw you. When we first went out together on purpose, I explained how I had always known that I was gay, but I wasn't really sure of the language to explain it to anyone. You listened intently, asked questions, never tired of hearing me explain these weird Southern traditions or my religious upbringing. You sat wide-eyed and we talked well past curfew. On that night, you taught me that things could be different, that there were people out there who truly listened to someone instead of just waiting for their turn to speak. And on that night, I thought that I loved you, but I had no idea. On my first visit to Oregon, where I got to fully experience the May family, we woke up the first morning and I said, what are the chances that your mom is making us pancakes right now? <laughs> and you said, zero percent, but I am pretty sure that our dad is making us breakfast. <laughs> and then we spent most of the first trip snuggling and flirting and just getting to know each other a little more, but I spent so much of it feeling more love from essentially strangers than I had felt in a long time. I had never been so happy. I had no idea that so much bliss could exist in my body, and this is just one bullet point of the outline of the biggest lesson I've ever gotten from you. And that is the lesson of what it is like to love and what it's like to be loved. Phoebe, every day you surpass the bar that you established the day before of your overflowing capacity of love. Day after day to show me grace, understanding, affection, comfort, and guidance. To say I am fully obsessed with you and the life that we've created would be an understatement. You show me time and time again that it's okay to ask for help and that it's okay to be proud of who I am. Since we met, not a single moment has passed between us that wasn't made better by your presence. And at the end of my worst days, there is no place I would rather be than in our home together. You are my partner, my best friend, the love of my life, the future parent of my children, and every day that I get to wake up and take on this absolutely absurd world with you is the greatest day of my life. Morgan, do you take Phoebe to live together in the union of marriage, to take them as your best friend and partner in life, to honor, cherish, and love them for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health for all of your days? I do. Phoebe, do you take Morgan to live together in the union of marriage, to take her as your best friend and partner in life, to honor, cherish, and love her from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, for all of your days? I do. <laughs> I'm pleased to pronounce Morgan and Phoebe as wife and spouse. You may kiss the bride. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, for the first time, Mix and Mrs. May. Stay with me until the last man falls. I don't need them anyway. When I'm with you, I have it all. Oh, oh I'll never let you slip away. Oh, oh, and you don't have to be afraid. I will hold you till the sun comes crashing down. I'm yours until the end of time. Fade away and your scars don't, your scars don't Say my name, stay with me till the stars fade away And your scars don't, your scars don't hurt 